Hey guys, welcome back. We've been eating a lot of chickpea crepes in our house of late, and they become quite a favorite with different dips and toppings. So much so that when we had some friends over, guess what? I served them these baby chickpea crepes, blini style with beetroot cream and green pea relish. Blinis usually have eggs in the mix, but these chickpea ones are perfect for a vegan diet. If you're short of time, you can top them with store-bought hummus and relish. More importantly, these vanish so fast in just one bite. So let's get cooking. We start off first by cutting the vegetables. I've got some uh, garlic, some peppers, some coriander and red onion with me. The garlic needs to be finely chopped. Uh, the finer you chop the vegetables is better because you don't want large chunks to come in your mouth. After garlic is done, we chop in the red onion. Now I prefer to use the red onion because they have a much stronger flavor. They also have less uh, water content. And when you cook them, they still have a bite in them and they also give a very nice subtle color. Uh, so the white onions are a big no-no for this dish, but the red onions work well. If you have banana shallots, even that would work well. Or if you have tiny button onions, even that would work extremely well with this. But make sure that you finely chop them. The onions are done, they then transfer off into a bowl. These are going to go in the pancake, in the blini or the chickpea pancake and also into the green pepper relish. Fresh coriander leaves, they give a very nice uh, aroma and also they give a very nice flavor to the dish. Very herby, has a lovely green color to it, really works well. Uh, finely chop the leaves and again keep them aside into a bowl. So basically keep all the miso plus, all arranged, all the vegetables pre-cut and all ready to go. All you do is mix them afterwards. The green peppers are deseeded and again they are finely chopped. Doesn't have to be perfectly chopped because these are going to be cooked. They will sweat down and they will become slightly mushy. Uh, but still on a safer side, always cut them quite finely. I'm using chickpea flour for the pancakes. I find it a better alternative than having a normal all-purpose flour or a whole wheat flour. I think they also give a very nice flavor. Also, even a gluten-free diet, this works extremely well. Add salt to it, add baking powder. Uh, baking powder helps you to make it a bit lighter because chickpea flour is quite dense. Red chili powder and then goes in our chopped garlic and the finely chopped red onion. And after that goes in the lovely green aromatic and flavorful coriander or cilantro. Now if you do not like coriander, you want to use parsley or you want to use mint, that is perfectly okay. Now dry mix them together. You want basically all the chili powder, the baking powder and the salt and the vegetable to mix up with the flour and lightly coat it. So when you add the liquid in it, it doesn't find or make pockets as such of uh, ingredients together. It mixes quite well. Approximately for a cup of uh, chickpea flour, I would use probably one and a half cups of uh, water at room temperature. But add uh, half the water first and gauge the thickness. Sometimes the flour quality varies and you have to add less water or more water depending on the flour. So always add half the water and then keep on topping up as much water as you want. What I'm trying to achieve here is to get a batter which is of a flowing consistency. I don't want it too thin otherwise then the batter just spreads on to my pan. But just about sticking as I put it down. I have a, a flat grill at home which I use. You can use a non-stick pan, works perfectly well. Heat it up and add some oil. And add literally a table and a half or two tablespoons of the batter on top of the oil and on the heated pan. What that does is it begins to cook the pancake from the bottom and once they're almost halfway cooked you add a little more oil drizzle on top you can use olive oil you can use rapeseed oil you can use canola oil it's your choice whatever oil you want to use so sprinkle the oil on top and when the bottom side is almost cooked flip it over to cook on the second side i have intentionally made them into a small size because you want them literally to be a bite size or a maximum two bites. You don't want to weigh it large. So if you're having small gatherings at home or people coming over and you want to do pass around snacks or canapes, this works extremely well. Uh, normally for a blini, use a different flour altogether. But I just think the chickpea flour is the catch here. It makes it very nice and different. It also gives a very nice kind of a nutty flavor to the pancake and gives it some kind of a body and a character. The pancakes are done, they're cooked on both the sides. These are allowed to rest for a while. 
and then we're moving on to making our green pepper relish now you can use red pepper you can use orange pepper you can use yellow pepper i am using green because i have beetroot to go also along with this so the color combination are very important i've heated some oil and then goes in the red onion lightly sweat them down don't cook for too long and then goes in my finely chopped green peppers now green peppers they are spicy as such but they have a slight sweet undertone to it they have a very nice flavor of their own but they need to sweat with the onions and the onions also as they cook they tend to become slightly sweet but they give a very nice flavor to the peppers it gives a body also salt extremely important to bring out the best flavors but once the salt is mixed together with the peppers and the onions then goes in my apple cider vinegar you can use white vinegar here if you want to use some white wine feel free the choice is yours avoid using lemon juice or lime juice because that is too harsh and too sharp you want it to be slightly liquidy so literally the the vegetables cook into the liquid and they become soft red chili powder to give it a kick you can use uh, cayenne pepper you can use smoked paprika perfectly fine a generous quantity of sugar because the flavors are going to be sweet sour spicy salty so all the umami flavor which you get all the senses are all in right now so it's literally a burst of flavors in this tiny quantity of relish moving on to the beetroot cream again a very very simple and easy recipes i boiled some beetroots in that i'm going to put in cashew nuts which have been soaked in warm water for half an hour or 45 minutes so the cashews become soft you can put hummus if you like the choice is yours you can even buy store bought boiled beetroot it will work well add the salt a clove of garlic lightly sliced off and a generous squeeze of lemon juice lemon juice with beetroot always works well the cashew gives it a very nice body and holds the beetroot together beetroot has a high quantity of for, of water so the beetroot binds it well but when you blitz it all together the color becomes nice and bright pink is a cashew uh, becomes a paste and holds the beetroot together and what you get is a lovely beetroot cream so it's a great vegan dish to assemble put the chickpea blinis or the pancakes on the plate top it up with beetroot cream again topped up with green pepper relish and fresh coriander leaves such a simple technique such a simple dish but great flavors and very impactful make sure to try it at home and leave your comments on the section below happy cooking